Hey everyone, this is Dean with DCA Crypto. Had some bullish moves in the market over the last 24 hours, so I want to cover that in this video as well as what's going on. So I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel, smash that like button, and let's jump into it. All right, today we're going to take a look at the charts with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and what's going on with the markets. Even the stock market has been up over the last 24 hours. So what's causing that? Let's jump into it. All right, so we are, you know, a little over 2.3 trillion market cap. We've had an increase of about 4% in the total market cap for crypto over the last uh, 24 hours or so. Bitcoin actually got up to about 65,000, close to 65,000. It's had a little bit of a correction. Uh, but by the time this video comes out, no telling where it'll be. But uh, it's just where it's at at the you know at the time of this recording right now. Ethereum at a little over 2,700 had a little bit of bullish action in the markets here. I'm going to cover the reasons why in this video here. But overall, pretty green 24 hours in crypto. Some of the coins up 30%. I even seen some up like 90% over the last 24 hours. So some really good moves in the market this week and uh, some some green days right now. So will this last or not? That's what we're going to look at. So with Bitcoin here, so we're still in this channel. So we, we can't really, if we look at and zoom in on this, we basically bounced off 65,000 here. And as of this recording, now we could keep moving up higher than this, but we're still in this channel. And until we break out of this channel and get up above 70,000 again, I'm not going to get my hopes up for anything here. We could still get rejected off from these levels and come right back down. Uh, just because we got some bullish news with the interest rates mainly is why we had this jump in price, in my opinion. And nothing really, until those interest rates actually go into effect and we start getting liquidity in the market, I don't expect a big change in this right now. Um, so... Right now, I'm just still watching and seeing what's happening, and I'm not going to get too bullish until we get up above these levels here and start making a new all-time high. But it's good that we're holding these levels, and I don't see any reason why we would break down below these levels unless something bad happens. I would expect us to stay in this channel until the markets change entirely. And, of course, something bad, some kind of black swan event could happen that could push us lower than this. But without some kind of black swan event, I don't see that happening. You know, I could be wrong on that. But even if, you know, if we were to get down to like, you know, 51,000 or something, like even here we wicked down to 48,900 and we still recovered back and got into this channel. So it just goes to show you that Bitcoin really likes being in this channel right now. And until we break out of it one way or another, you know, nothing has changed. And that's what we need to focus on mainly. If we take a look at the ETH chart here, ETH does not look very healthy. Um, you know, it just doesn't look very healthy right now. And you know, Bitcoin dominance is a main main thing with that. And I, you know, I was hoping that the Ethereum ETFs would push us up higher, but really, we we did get the dump after the Ethereum ETFs um, that I was talking about happening. But I was hoping the I was hoping the Ethereum ETFs would push us up higher. It may once the Bitcoin dominance drops, but right now Bitcoin dominance keeps rising. And with that happening, it's really crushing the altcoins, but we are seeing some recovery in the alts over the past week. So we'll have to see how this plays out. But until Bitcoin loses its dominance, we're not gonna get a true alt season. And these alts, even Ethereum, are gonna pay for it uh, right now. And Ethereum is just, you know, right now not really doing much if we look at ethereum right here and we compare it to the last bull run here you know if we look at the last bull run we were constantly on an upward trend that whole cycle you know if you look at these lows these these lows were always higher lows we never fully corrected down like we have right now you know we're not on any higher low at at any point um, I mean it technically we could say we kind of are slightly but I guess it depends on how this plays out and maybe we're gonna go on this trend here and we're gonna we're gonna go and we're gonna make some moves like from here to here and so on with this you know maybe we'll be on a trend like this for the rest of this cycle and we keep going up from there 
we'll have to see what happens with that but right now you know it's not looking too hot and you know, may have to adjust this we don't have enough data right now to go off this but if we look at ethereum basically in 2019 that's kind of what it looks like now this this little bump right here is kind of what ethereum is looking at like right now where we made you know this move up and then we came back down it's kind of what it's looking like if we zoom in on that uh, we could take a closer look at that and that would give us a kind of a better idea of what things are looking like right now just kind of like this here and then we came down and then finally took off into that bull run so I'm thinking that's more of where we're at is something like that and we're not you know we're not in the bull cycle yet with ethereum maybe just the beginning of it maybe we're maybe we're just going to start taking off and going from there but this line here you know basically this actually could end up playing out where this is the trend and we keep moving up on this trend here with with ethereum we don't know what it's going to do but you know that that could be a potential possibility off that here you know and i'm not a chart expert so you know you can't really go off from anything i'm telling you as far as charts are concerned to be honest with you i'm, I'm not good at charts but you know i'm just looking at the trends with it and right now i don't see anything good going on with ethereum even with that etf but i would expect that you know it's probably right now closest to the lowest it's going to be potentially for the rest of this cycle if we go into a bull run here uh, so it's still probably in a good buying zone if you're looking at potentially adding some ETH to your portfolio. More bullish on like Solana, Avalanche, Chainlink, stuff like that than I am Ethereum. But with the ETF, you know, it's really difficult to say how that could play out for Ethereum. It could do really well over the course of time with it. This Pi Cycle top indicator is what I'm going to continually be watching. It looks like we're right in the same point in the market as we were back in 2019 here with this and Benjamin Cohen agrees with me on that. I just watched a video of his uh, you know, a day or two ago where he he's thinking the same thing I am. This is like a 2019 move where you know we we came where they were kind of close together and we stopped and we're having that correction now and then these two are going to keep moving apart and then we're going to go into the bull run where they touch each other or get close to touching each other and his theory was uh, these this actually this yellow line actually crossed the green for a long period of time here and then in this cycle here it crossed it for a very short period of time here and then the last cycle they just touched so he's thinking in this cycle they could potentially not even fully touch they may just come really close to each other and not actually touch so when, when these two lines get close to each other on this pi cycle top chart it's really probably a good time to start taking out some heavy profits on the market. Uh, and that doesn't mean that the market would necessarily be over. It depends on if we've had the alt season yet, because you know sometimes after Bitcoin has a little bit of a correction, then we go into the alt season. But you know it just depends on how this really plays out. But I know that by the time these two lines are getting really close to touching each other, where they're almost touching, I'm going to be cashing out a good portion of my portfolio just to make sure that I'm out of the market at a good time because that's a good indicator that we are close to the top of the cycle based off from of, you know historical records of it is is basically what we need is all we can go off from really we don't know for sure but based off from of these last cycles when these two lines touched each other that was pretty much the peak of the cycle for the most part so yeah it was a little different in the last cycle because we had a double top so it may not mean that you know we could still get a second top after that but even if you cashed out mostly here you would have done really well in the last cycle so that's kind of how I'm looking at it so this is pretty much what caused the bullish move on Bitcoin yesterday Fed Chair Powell uh, indicates interest rate cuts ahead he said the time has uh, come for pol the policy to adjust and Jerome Powell has laid the groundwork for interest rate cuts ahead, though he declined to provide exact indications on timing or the extent of the cuts. More than likely, it's going to be September, and it's just a matter of if they're going to do 0.25% or 0.5%.
Some people think they'll do a half a percent. Uh, that is possible, but uh, I'm kind of guessing they're going to do a 0.25% because they don't want to put any panic in the markets and expect them to do a few of those cuts, two or three by the end of the year, potentially. If they do a half a point cut, it could potentially cause a little bit of panic in the market. And, you know, that because it gives people the indication of, whoa, we went, we went too far. We need to make a hard correction here. So I don't, I don't see that happening, but I could be wrong on that. They may be, they may do a half percent cut, uh, but I'm thinking by the end of the year, you know, we would probably see uh, three quarters of a point cut potentially here. So they're saying here the the time has come for the policy to adjust. Uh, the direction of the travel is clear, and the timing and the pace of the rate cuts will depend on the incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks. And he did say inflation has declined significantly. The labor market is no longer overheated and conditions are now less tight than those that prevailed before the pandemic. Supply constraints have normalized and the balance of risk to our mandates has changed. And he said they'll do whatever they can to make sure the labor market stays strong and progress on inflation continues. And uh, basically, you know, the markets did really well because of this decision. Uh, we have seen a I think a 500 point move in the stock market uh, yesterday because of this. And uh, so hopefully, um, you know, this continues to affect the markets in a positive way. But I know in the past, and I've watched a few other chart analysts, market analysts uh, talk about that when they actually do the rate cuts, we usually get a we usually get a drop in the in the uh, markets, like the stock markets, a pretty drastic drop in the mar stock markets right after the rate cuts actually happen so we'll have to see what happens with that and how but crypto usually does really well with it so i don't know if they shift the funds you know if they start selling off their stocks and they start moving that money into crypto because they're more risky assets that could potentially be what's happening with that so they're saying the feds targets two percent but right now i think they're around two and a half percent but it's down from 3.2 percent a year ago and it was at 7% in uh, June of 2022. So it's down quite a significant amount from 2022. And that's when they really started raising interest rates. And we saw the crypto market start dumping after that. And we went into a bear market. So that's pretty much what I got for this video, guys. Don't forget to check out my free Telegram. The link for that will be in the description below. And my Discord, uh, through, that's a Patreon membership with my Discord. You guys can check that out as well. And I am partnered with CoinW as well. You guys can... Check them out through my Telegram. Uh, they've, they've got a Telegram set up for you guys where you can uh, learn about crypto trading and learn how to trade crypto and how to follow the expert traders for free uh, on their platform. They've got a whole Telegram set up uh, for, for just for my community for you guys to learn how to do that if that's something you're interested in. Uh, just remember if you do any leverage trading that you are careful with how much leverage and stuff that you use because leverage trading can be very risky so be careful of that but i know some people really want to get into trading and learn how to do that and uh, do well at it uh, so you can follow those guys uh, you can join through my telegram or through my discord uh, they've got channels set up for you guys if that's something you're interested in doing just you know make sure that you're responsible with that and don't go crazy uh, because you know you can get burned on that if you're if you don't know what you're doing so be careful with that but that's pretty much what i got for this video guys don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed hit that like button it really helps with the youtube algorithm and we'll see you on the next video